Contemporary Art Libraries. It holds around a few thousand items, um, books, catalogs, brochures, postcards, all kinds of things. Um, these materials are focused on contemporary arts in Thailand and also from other, um, from other countries and also other reference materials as well. Um, it's an operating library, it's open to the public for free. You can come in, borrow books, you can borrow um, DVDs, whatever kinds of things. And also the events that we organize are also free of charge. Um, and um, the emphasis for the activities that we've done are pretty much on um, socio-political situations that revolving around uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and um, the world in general. Um, so I'm just trying to sort of bring people together from different disciplines to discuss kind of relevant issues. Um, so it's sort of not to offer only information, but also um, try to create this course as well. And um, we're doing lots of collaborations with um, basically mo both local and international organizations, but we're trying to do it more with local organizations. And um, all our programs are in Thai. Some are in English, but if it's in English, we have to have interpreter to interpret into Thai because our focus is definitely on the local community. Um, so, what else? Um, so I opened this space in 2009, and um, it just happened. Lo lots of people asked, like, why are you doing this? And um, they thought that really I just wanted one day to just open this library thing. And um, <laughs> it's kind of, that's not the case. Um, I was actually let go by my previous employer, so I was like, I thought employment was probably, you know, bringing me to do these crazy projects. <laughs> employment could bring you to do irrational stuff at times. Uh, so <laughs> I just, I realized that, <laughs> seriously though, um, I realized that Bangkok has no, um, you know, contemporary resource. And um, I think that I have collected enough materials to actually open like a really tiny libraries um, on on contemporary issues. Um, I think it's you know there are many libraries that have uh, that contains art materials, but they focus on mostly ancient to like modern time because I think contemporary is something that's really hard to grasp. Um, it's still going on. It's still being built. It's being constructed, and it's probably hard to define. Um, and hard to collect since you know it hasn't been sort of judged or polished by time, and um, most of the materials are ephemeral as well, like catalogs or leaflets or postcards. Um, so it tends to be overlooked. Um, so I just decided one day to just rent a space, um, haul my books over, and just you know <coughs> brought my friends and shared them with um, the arts community. But. Um, after opening the space for a while, it so happened that people suggested that you know we should do certain activities. So we do um, the, the first one was film uh, film screenings, and then after that it was sort of like you know the snowball rolling over. When people know that you have physical space, um, they sort of like oh why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And it happens to be coincided with um, the time that we had this uh, sort of tightening grip of, of censorship from the military government at the time, which is around 2010. Um, so I was just pretty much like, you know, just discovering and learning as, as I run the space. It's like an ongoing process. It's not just like opening it and then, you know, I know, you know, we know what we wanted to do and then stick to it. It's not, it's, um, it's a learning process. And um, I guess um, just opening up the space and um, organizing or hosting whatever event has been canceled or banned or discouraged from other spaces. And sadly, some were, were from institution, like educational institutions or arts centers as well. And so that's the thing. I think that there, there are so many dimensions and purposes of one small physical space that, that could do, you know. And, um, so I learned along the way that it's, it should be flexible and it should allow itself to serve the, the needs of the community at the time. Um, so I'll just talk about really random examples of what we've done. Um, definitely do lots of one-offs events, like uh, one-day events or three-day events. Um, and also we're doing lots of series that covers maybe six months or eight months a year. And we're also doing um, off-site projects that are um, maybe 
situated in other places. Uh, don't usually do lots of arts uh, stuff, but um, these are some of the few. Um, and the fact that we're doing a lot, uh, we're dealing with really small space, it's, uh, the, one of the good things is that you can do, we can get together uh, an event like, in a really short amount of time, and I have to go through bureaucratic <laughs> stuff. So uh, when Hobbs bomb died, we just, you know, let, let's do this. It sounds crazy at the time, but um, we're just trying to sort of look at him through the context of what he offered to the Thai um, socialist movement uh, as well. And, Surprisingly, you know, the the more difficult or the more sort of academic stuff, like the more people wanted to come in. Uh, and this is about uh, iconoclast, uh, ISIS case studies, um, uh, Thatcher, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of cool. Um, and this is actually um, for Rocky. If you're in an institution, you can't do things like that. You'd be arrested or sued by Faraki's um, uh, estate. <laughs> so we did this, I think, two weeks after he died. Um, and uh, we sort of secretly done it guerrilla style <laughs> and invited um, a, a scholars and, and a film, uh, Thai film scholars and, and also um, Keiko, who actually knows him in, in person. Uh, Pirate Bay, so I'm just going through this quickly. So this is like Higgs bosons. Uh, we sort of invited physicists and philosophers to talk. Um, this is about uh, our constitutions. Um, it's, eight, it's been 80 years, and um, which is, this is a pro provocative kind of title. It's about um, the fact that we try to build it as like, you know, we're under a semi-religious um, kind of state, which is, we're kind of not, but lots of our uh, small laws um, somehow address like the Buddhism and um, this kind of what this is a kind of event that I like because you know we have some monks there and then we have different kinds of people who come through the spaces um, so uh, and this is uh, nonviolent stuff um, so we're doing lots of collaborations this is with um, Amnesty and uh, some other uh, NGOs and um, it's kind of an extreme or, uh, event that these kind of things, um, I think I, I really like. <laughs> um, it's like a live broadcast of a human rights um, from uh, panels from UN. And um, we're doing eight hours live broadcast with um, sort of like comment, live commentating from uh, like academics and um, NGOs. But it's like football style, you know, like really fun. And um, we're just trying to make it accessible to people. And um, there's food and drinks and <laughs> all kinds of things in between. Uh, or, you know, 13 hours of lap ass films. Um, and so we're just saying that uh, please bring your own snacks and pillows because, you know, we scream without a break. Uh, <laughs> or, like, Creative Time uh, Summits. We're doing live broadcasts with actually our own uh, Thai. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, this is our own sort of the, the lower parts is the. Thai panels, so we're we're sort of um, bring their titles and um, we're, we're just doing ma matching panels. So this is like uh, we're doing this and then doing the live broadcast after that kind of thing. Uh, we're also doing um, ongoing like year long or half a year collab uh, collaborative projects. Um, this one's about, uh, it's a night school, and we collaborate with a digital platform um, that focuses on digital um, online rights and human rights. And um, this is happening every month. This is when Occupy happened. This is when Innocence of Muslims happened. So it's, um, it's an in, informal platform to sort of um, talk and, and discuss about culture, uh, social and cultural digital issues. And this one's um, getting, identifying essential texts in um, social, political, and um, cultural uh, spheres, and then reinterpret it in a contemporary world. So there's a bunch of, um, you probably can see some English <laughs> there. There's some uh, um, art texts, and then also, um, also other fields, um, texts from other disciplines. And we also do some 
mass or pop stuff as well. This is our monthly uh, Strawberry Sunday book club. <laughs> uh, Thai and English. Uh, also, this is super pop. Um, it's a blind date with the book. So we just wrap the book up on Valentine's Day and uh, let people come and, and choose their date. <laughs> um, this is the quote from, uh, from sort of like, you know, your qualifications. Uh, <laughs> so they choose from this um, and rate the date experience. Like, and this year we did, it's, it proved so popular we had to do it every year and it's so hard to like <laughs> wrapping them up and like, identifying the quotes and things like that. And this is, um, this is, we're just doing a film. Uh, and some are cute stuff, but they're also like, you know, uh, in the traditions of the reading room. If you've seen it, you know it's Kluger's <laughs> or like, you know, it's rated on your Valentine, maybe you wanted it. Uh, <laughs> or uh, this is um, the off-site uh, projects that um, doing it with, I think um, Jennifer touched upon it a little bit about uh, this project and Leanne was um, the one who's curating it. Uh, it's a collaboration with um, a Filipino-American artist, um, Stephanie uh, Sihuko. Uh, she did this a series of projects and this is like um, the Bangkok leg and they wanted a collaborate, uh, collaborator who, who based in Thailand and knows about the text um, that's sort of worth sharing and, and relevant to, um, to contemporary uh, spheres. So um, it's basically a f you know, printed flyers that are kind of analog file sharing sites and the flyer has URL and um, we sort of glean through the internet and try to find what's ever available already. So it's like we're trying to find this gray area. We don't really know. It's like uh, if it's really legal or illegal, but we're just, you know, pointing the spotlight on it. And it's like it's there. It's important. Maybe, you know, you don't know it's there. Uh, let's try to, to find out these, uh, these texts. And um, th it, this is like the final format. So we have like, you know, everything. You can print it out as well. Um, so mine. Uh, her selections were more of like digital copyrights and um, more contemporary uh, like arts, Western art stuff. Um, mine was more towards uh, political stuff because at that time there's huge protest um, right actually around um, the whole art center area and um, I thought that it would be kind of interesting to actually brought like all these leftist um, writings into the institutions that actually informally they kind of shelter the, um, the protester on the rights. So <laughs> that's kind of uh, something that I love. <laughs> and um, these kind of things, the, uh, if this project also proves to be such a success that we had to replenish it all the time, especially the Thai um, text. And people usually don't know that there are all these things available online for free. Um, and the text that they, the handwriting was saying that, you know, can we have more of this one? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so, it's, so that's like a really nice thing. Um, also, this is another part of, of the free text, um, which is like a text swap party. Um, we're just, um, you know, just it's bring your own thumb drive, pretty much, and then uh, you just say what's in there, and then just do it, <laughs> stick it in, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the thing that I love is. Um, <laughs> the number one is really cute. Um, you know, it's like copyright piracy, digital culture. <laughs> but you're totally, you know, <laughs> evading it or something. Um, and also, we're doing lots of projects that are so just larger than what we can do. And this is uh, so we're using crowdsource. Um, I got invited into a, an, an exhibition, so I just thought that Bangkok's been selected as World Book City, I think, and and um, the government hasn't done anything, so I thought that it's probably nice to just do something. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm trying to build a book map, which is a map of public and private libraries and uh, independent um, bookstores around Bangkok, and um, we're actually 
go over um, online and, and sort of ask people to share their um, favorite or the, their neighborhood bookstores or libraries. And we've got really nice uh, response from that. And this is the final product. Done it in probably like three weeks. <laughs> uh, this is the map and this is all kinds of information. It's crazy. Um, it's, that's the end product. So, and this is um, sort of the the installations that we let people come in, and you know what we've missed basically. Um, so these are pretty much like the programs we do. Oh, sometimes we do pop up library as well, and also um, every most of the events that we've done um, put online. Uh, this is our reading room. YouTube channel you can access for free. So we have 72, 73 view, uh, 1,000 views, just really nice. Um, been around since 2011. These are everything. This Q&A with John Torres, whose film you'll be seeing <laughs> in two days. Uh, and Facebook. So that's kind of um, what we've been doing. And um, do I have time? It was like five minutes. Um, I just really wanted to touch on like one um, issue that I think is pretty interesting because uh, as you've seen, like done a lot of events um, and projects that are not um, art related. It's just because uh, there's no art audience. Like the, I've realized like really early on that none of the art people came to our space. Uh, really, really few of them came. Um, they, they don't really wanted to browse the book or read them or actually participate in any of the of the events and um, you know it's just uh, really at, at first uh, it really boggles my mind but um, uh, I just sort of slowly come to realize like what's happening in the country <laughs> and um, I think it's you know it's especially in countries like Thailand it's probably a general assumption that uh, you know most contemporary arts probably be inclined to be politically or socially active and left-leaning um, and it's just proved invalid in, in Thailand where there's such a paradoxical and enigmatic and almost incomprehensible situations going on. Um, so I'll, what I'm trying to say is that um, well, um, let me see I think that what it's sort of um, come to is pretty much the fact that um, in in Thailand there's this um, you know campaign of like propaganda propaganda campaign going on at all time. Like everyone, um, you know, wh when w in in education from birth to death, like you are inculcated to to, to um, an ideology, you know, the devotion to the triads of um, nations, um, Buddhism, and the king, and it manifests itself on um, every level of society. And um, and artists, it's part of that wheel. And and I think um, most artists are being produced uh, from the same mold, which is um, this huge um, and important, most important art university in, in the city and um, they're the most conservative ones and I think the cur curricula ha probably hasn't been changed in 60, 70 years and so they're still like teaching in a salon style um, and uh, very strict rules and you know impose values on everything and so they're doing a lot of things uh, just on uh, you know just these type of um, based on the values and um, it's just, education is so exploited. There are only one official narratives on everything. There's one official narratives on art history, on donations, on you know, all kinds of things. And um, you know, it's, there's only one version of the truth. And um, there's just the lack of general sentiment of actually wanting you know, or, or wanting to accept difference in opinion even, and um, both in schools and in society in general. And if you question these values, you know, it will bring about the accusation that you are unpatriotic or, uh, you know, it could be like anti-royalist even. 
So that's, um, I think that's the, the danger of it. Um, and in these unusual settings, I think I came to understand why democracy and equal rights have somehow been distorted by the right wings and the royalists as anti-monarchy, which means that you're opposing to anything good in, in their world. You know, um, so it kind of I think it sort of you know <laughs> makes some kind of sense um, that artists are pretty much doing all kinds of things that are like this. Uh, these are like national artists. Um, the works are you know, focusing on the king, the king's mother, and everything that's good and right and <coughs> morally safe. And <laughs> uh, so. I'm just going to talk about what's happening in general uh, and um, what the artists came uh, into the picture. Sorry if it's scrambling, I just really <laughs> just um, put this together. Uh, this is our uh, dear leader, our, our prime minister who is in the military. He, uh, he organized a coup last year. and. Um, the first thing he's done is um, he's just organized a campaign of happiness and wanted to return happiness to the people by so lots of songs and dance uh, and uh, some stage play a la North Korea, so <laughs> which is our cousin countries, I think, right now. And there's even a poll of which is so fake. This is a poll of uh, happiness, that like, mass happiness poll. And it's just saying that uh, this is like increasing, the, your happiness increasing, your happiness uh, decreased since the coup. So, and that's like a regional, you know, north, south, blah, blah. So everyone's so happy uh, <laughs> since the coup happens. <laughs> it's so funny. And um, there's all kinds of crackdown on, um, at, well, definitely at first, academics were uh, arrested and it was it was like they were arrested in a very dramatic way as well because um, it was very old school um, academics activists journalists were cracked down um, and uh, sort of well they were dissents right uh, perceived by the military as as dissents and so um, they have an old school way of doing things so every TV channel at first I think in the during the first um, weeks were all playing militaristic and patri patriotic songs. Some songs are like really, you know, looked down on like neighbors country. <laughs> and um, uh, every evening they will have an announcement and then after that there's just a list of all these descents rolling up. And it was really just uh, depressing to, to see like the, you know, name of people you know and you're just like, will they be someone I know? Like the roles just uh, the, the name was just rolling up and up like the end credit um, of the film. So um, people, the, the dissents uh, were um, called into the military camps and threatened and some uh, got arrested. Uh, and, well, that's the beginning and then after that there are all kinds of, um, you know, activities that students and um, other, other activists have been doing. And um, it's just got all, uh, all kinds of absurdity, like Kafka or Kundera type. Like the, uh, that guy that you saw is um, reading 1984 and eating sandwich, and he got arrested. Uh, and uh, so after this, after this guy did that, uh, you can't eat sandwich in public, and you can't uh, read 1984 in public for a long time. So <laughs> and this is a map of all the crazy things that they did. Uh, so you can't, so you can't eat sandwich. You can't read 1984. Uh, you can't, um, you can't do the three three finger salutes uh, of the Hunger Game. Um, you can't. Um, oh, there's a foreigner who actually um, bought uh, T-shirts that say "Peace, Please," and he got arrested. Uh, poor guy. <laughs> and um, there's um, us. At we were up right up there. I'm not sure how to do this. Like, is it there? Anyway, um, we were up there as well, um, doing a. Um, the military came, and canceled all our events one time. So it's a um, great, sort of historic day in the reading room <laughs> history. Uh, so you know that's sort of how it goes, and 
where did artists fit into this? So they just like creating beautiful artworks in support of the military, of course. And these are all nice uh, national artists, uh, professors, um, dean of fine arts department, all kinds of people. Um, they even do fundraise for the military, these kind of things, and shut down one of the roads to do art lane. Um, but of course, you know, they, they, I kind of understand that they were trying to do uh, the right thing. And I would say, if I would even just go further that I would say most of the political artists or political artworks from Thailand are, are basically created by this sentiment of trying just to, uh, to be against moral corruption and not just ideological, uh, you know, like uh, corruptions. It's, it's more, for them, it's more doing things that are um, will, will bring goodness back to the country and um, will propagate like the, the three um, institutions of the countries again. And um, so of course they overlook and or in fact unable to, to acknowledge the fact that institutions that are more corrupted are the ones that are most revered in the countries, right? Um, the monarchy, the Buddhist council and the military. Uh, and I don't understand how they could be so blind. Uh, this is, uh, the, I think the monarchies in particular are um, the most problematic because they're protected by a harmful law called Les Majeste. If you defame uh, or if you're accused of defaming a uh, royal family, you could be put into jail uh, for a long time. And this is uh, the Les Majeste sentence in our countries. Uh, this one guy. Um, this guy, the poor guy, he died already in jail. He's got accused of sending SMS to one of the government officials saying that the queen's a whore or something like that. And so he got arrested and uh, ten, uh, 20 years imprisonment. So these are the kinds of things that uh, somehow is sort of eluded the minds of, of lots of artists um, and right wing in the countries. But um, just end really quickly by saying that there, there are hopes and there are kids and students and ac activists who are trying to do something. It's just that they're not normally um, people from the art world. <laughs> it's often people from other fields who tries to do something uh, like, you know, this is invisible. Uh, it's, it's about um, po political prisoner who are deemed invisible in, in the country or, you know, thought police. Um, or just re reading as resistance, going quickly, and or this uh, NU uh, from Australia, Thai studies, I think, um, trying to say that um, the fact that the coup, military coup, trying to say that you know we should remain calm and lead a normal life, it's it's leading a normal life under you know this uh, garbage bag. <laughs> uh, um, so it's, that's. That's about it. Um, if you have any questions, <laughs> maybe later. Thank you.